It's a non-oncopathogenic virus, so it's not known to cause any um, known, known diseases, and it actually can be used for a lot of good. There are also there are many clinical trials going on now using AAB for gene delivery um, therapy. So what happens is the virus, which is just a protein capsid encapsulating DNA, delivers therapeutic genes to cells that may have a disease. So as you can see in the picture, there are several viruses that can be used for gene um, therapy applications. Um, AAV is the one we work with. In order for the virus to be able to deliver genes, the virus has to first attach to the cell that it's binding to. It has to be taken up into the cell, and the DNA has to be trafficked to the nucleus of the cell, where it can then be transcribed and translated into a therapeutic protein. To uh, purify the viral plasmids from the bacteria or from our E. coli cells, we lyse the cells, which breaks open the, the cells and exposes the plasmids. Um, and then we'll run these through our filtration columns. And these are just um, contain porous membranes such that the uh, bacterial components get trapped and the plasmid DNA can flow through. So once we have cut um, our plasmid with these specific enzymes, we can load this onto an agarose gel, which is just a porous gel. We can then apply an electrical current, and since we know that DNA is negatively charged, it'll run from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So fragments that are smaller will run faster through the gel, and the fragments that are larger will run more slowly. So when we um, image the gel, we'll be able to tell the difference between small fragments and large fragments. We can use the ladder that you see on the far left side to be able to tell which size these fragments are. So we can analyze the fragments and compare them to our plasmid map and ensure that the DNA that we have is the DNA that we want to make our virus. So now that we've purified and analyzed our plasmids, we can use them to actually make our virus. So first, we start off with our three plasmids. We add them together, and then we apply them to our specialized um, mammalian cells. So these mammalian cells will so, serve as virus factories for us, and then after um, a period of time, we will be able to um, lyse them and harvest our uh, virus that we can use for other applications. Now we're in our uh, tissue culture room, and this is where we actually uh, grow our cells, which are our factories for making viruses. Um, so first I want to show you our cryo tank. This is, um, a tank that's kept very cold. We put liquid nitrogen in it. So this is where our cells are stored. We just keep them in stacks like this, and then label the cells so we make sure we know what cells are in what boxes. And I'm actually using uh, specialized gloves as well, just so that I don't get any sort of freezer burn. Um, when I'm touching these cells. This is our non-viral tissue culture hood. Uh, it's important to keep it, everything as sterile as possible to ensure that there's no sort of bacterial contamination. Um, before we put anything inside the hood, what we do is sterilize it with 70% ethanol. So that's what I'm doing here. And this is what's called a serological pipette. It's wrapped in plastic so that we know it's uh, sterile on the inside. We only open it inside the tissue culture hood. Um, so what I'm doing here is transferring media, which contains all the necessary nutrients for my cells to grow, and I'm putting that on a tissue culture plate here. So after we've made our virus, we um, first we lyse our mammalian cells, and we add the contents to this iodixinol gradient. So the iodixinol gradient has a gradient of increasing density iodixinol, we add the, the total cellular contents to the top of the gradient and then spin it in an ultracentrifuge. This allows us to separate out our virus particles from all the other contents of the cell. So once we um, have spun it down, we, we know which layer our virus will be in, and this allows us to um, isolate purified virus. So after we, um, after we purify our virus, we can add it to cells and actually see virus infection. So in this example, um, we've taken mammalian cells and added our virus. In this case, it encodes for um, GFP, or green fluorescent protein. It was actually first discovered in jellyfish. So what we, what we can do is have our virus deliver this gene to the nucleus, and then the cells will produce this GFP, this fluorescent protein, which we can image under ultraviolet light. This is just one small example of being able to deliver a marker gene, but eventually our lab would like to be able to um, modify our virus so that it can target specific cells within the body and in turn deliver genes that would be therapeutic and help cure diseases.